In the last two videos, we saw how a pre-image can be used with some transformations to find an image, and how we can use an image with some transformations to find the pre-image. In this video, we're going to attempt to find the transformations to go from the pre-image to the image equation for both of these examples here. When transforming from y equals x squared to y equals 3 times negative x plus 8 to the power of 2 minus 2, we are asking the question, what happened along the way? What are the sequence of transformations? To answer this, the first thing we need to do is identify the image equation correctly. That means putting apostrophes on the x and y variables for the image equation. This is very important so that we can distinguish between the image variables and the pre-image variables later on when we want to compare them. From here, we want to move everything over to the left side of the image equation that has to do with the y variable. Or in other words, you want to isolate everything related to the x inside the brackets on the right hand side. Now using this image equation, we're going to compare this with the pre-image equation. So you want to compare the right hand sides together and the left hand sides together. So negative x dash plus 8 equals x and y dash over 3 plus 2 over 3 equals y. Rearrange them so that x dash and y dash are the subjects, and we have negative x plus 8 and 3y minus 2. These equations tell us how to transform x and y into x dash and y dash. And they are literal, so you don't have to take the opposite of anything you see, just take it as you see it. Now we need to write down the transformations in a very specific order, drt. And I'm not sure why this is the case, my best guess is it's a standard convention to make it easier for examiners to compare answers. So the first thing you want to do is pick out all the dilations. There's only one, which is 3 times y, and so we dilate by a factor of 3 from the x-axis. There is a negative on the x, and so we reflect in the y-axis. Plus 8 means translate 8 units to the right, and minus 2 for the y-value means translate 2 units down. And all of this should be quite familiar with you guys if you've seen all my previous videos on transformation so far, because this is basically just going backwards in the process. And if you're not sure about the accuracy of your transformation equations, you can do a coordinate map for them based on the written sequence. If you get the same equations back based on the sentences you wrote, then it should be okay. It's also worth noting that transformations can be written in different sequences with different values. So I may have used a different sequence in my previous videos when trying to generate the image equation or the pre-image, but it doesn't make this sequence any better or worse than them. It's just a different way to interpret transformations. Okay, so before starting on this example, make sure there's an apostrophe on your x and y for the image equation. And now we'll have to rearrange both equations because when you look at the pre-image equation, there is a 3 and a negative 2 involved with the y variable, and so that will go to the left side. And you'll do something similar for the image equation, making sure all the stuff to do with y goes to the left side. And now both equations are comparable for their x and y terms respectively. So 10x dash plus 21 equals 5x plus 1, and y dash over 2 plus 3 equals to negative y over 2 plus 3 on 2. Rearrange these for x dash and y dash as the subjects, and we have our transformation equations. From here, Interpret what they mean into their sequence by first addressing the dilations. The half on the x means dilate by a factor of half from the y-axis. The negative on the y means reflect in the x-axis. Minus 2 for the x means translate 2 units left. And minus 3 for y means translate 3 units down. Once again, if you want to verify this, just start off with x, y as your coordinate and do a map based on the sequence you've just written. It looks like it's the same thing, so the answer is correct. And that's all there is to it. Basically, you want to start from both ends of the question, and you work your way towards the middle to figure out what the transformations are. Now for my next video, I might make something on matrix transformations, but if there's anything else you guys would like to see in the near future, please let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you think it'll help them. Don't forget to click that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell so that you get notified about the next video. Thanks so much for watching guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.